Before we get started, I've noticed that a lot of you guys aren't actually subscribed according to my YouTube analytics. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. It costs you nothing, supports the channel, and you're always free to unsub at any time. Now, onto bullying shit players. Modern Yu-Gi-Oh is a light speed facade in the game that it once was. I got into this game during 2018 during Firewolf FTK format with all the dangers and dark worlds when I had just, you know, left during Synchro era when I was like 10 years old. It took me about a month to relearn the game at a competitive level and to this day I still see a lot of people complaining about the difficulty of the game and how modern Yu-Gi-Oh has ruined the game for what it once was. This isn't to say that the game isn't intimidating at a glance, but once you sort of peel away that veneer that a lot of people seem to complain about, the game isn't actually that hard to learn and understand. So in this video I'm going to be trying to do my best and explain why I believe modern Yu-Gi-Oh isn't actually that hard to learn. The first point I wanted to address is that modern Yu-Gi-Oh summoning mechanics are way too difficult. There's synchros, there's pendulums, there's Xyz, there are link zones, everything after GX was trash and you should feel bad if you enjoy playing it. This is just inherently not that true. As weird as it is to say this, the anime is actually a great place to learn how these summoning mechanics work. I distinctly remember as a kid watching Yu-Gi-Oh 5Ds on my mom's 26 inch Samsung that she bought at Best Buy yesterday, and the concepts of tuner plus number just sort of made sense. Xyz is just stacking things on top of each other with a level requirement. Link monsters are just contact fusions that can only be summoned in zones linked by other link monsters. Pendulums can be a bit of an exception due to their multiple mechanics of being both a monster, a spell, the extra deck, and all sort of that stuff. But it doesn't really take a NASA grade scientist to figure out how they work. Just remember to do your research, watch a Master Rule 5 summoning how to play, and play some games online with decks that revolve around these summoning mechanics. Endymion for Pendulum, Sharks for, you know, Xyz. Trust me, it'll take you less than a day to learn how these things work, and I guarantee you, it'll solve 90% of the problems that you have right now. The second point I see thrown around is that cards are way too difficult to read and have essays upon essays for text. Now I'm not saying that modern cards aren't an eyesore due to the amount of text they have, but most cards aren't more or less written or designed in the same way, so that even if you don't fully understand a card at first glance, you're able to determine relatively what they're able to do after a first read or two. There's a reason why most cards have slangs or shorthands used to describe them. This card is a Striados, this card is a Garnet, this card is a Dryanet, etc, etc. The sort of language does have to be picked up over time with just enough exposure to the game. And I'm not saying that every card is going to always immediately click after a first read. I mean, Endymion and Border do exist, along with the intricacies of problem-solving card texts and conjunctives. But I am saying, if you know what sort of key phrases you're looking for in a card, such as specific phrases like searching, clauses, conditions, etc., you'll definitely be able to understand cards far more e quickly and easily. If you're looking to get into higher tier competitive play, be sure to read problem solving card decks as well. There are a lot of guides online and I strongly recommend every player to check them out. The third point I have in mind isn't really about the learning the game itself or the game being too difficult to understand, but more about the cards themselves, in the sense that the meta is too expensive. Oh, Pot of Extravagance used to be $100, Lightning Storm's like $2 million, I have to take out a second mortgage in order to afford my side deck for my Blue Eyes Turbo deck. Uh, the objectively best cards and options will always have a high demand price tag. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh has always been expensive for its entire duration. This goes for almost everything in life and not just Yu-Gi-Oh. Mirror Forces used to cost about $40-$60 per copy in its first printing. Judgment Dragon and the entire Lightsworn deck was one of the most expensive decks, along with Teladad, if not Teladad being the most expensive deck of all time. Plague Spreader Zombie was about $30 and 10 times that amount for the Ultimate Rare. Just because you didn't play with these expensive cards as a kid doesn't mean that these price tags never have existed. Even shit tier decks have always had expensive cards in them, like Blue Eyes. Yu-Gi-Oh has always been pay to play for its entirety, and pretending that the game is quote unquote pay to win, which it isn't, but that's an entirely different video, is just a false and really stupid claim to make in my opinion. Yu-Gi-Oh just overall and has been will be really expensive, and that's just the reality of the matter. I want to try and get more people into the game, and Yu-Gi-Oh is a great community to meet new people from all different types of backgrounds, but to see people brush off the game due to how complex it may seem at a first glance is a bit disheartening. I genuinely believe that the game is a bit pretty understandable once you actually do your research into what does what and how it does it. Kind of like with any game to be honest. Although the game has an annoying difficulty curve, I will admit, I 100% believe that anyone and everyone can learn Yu-Gi-Oh, even with how fast it has progressed within the past couple of years. Anyways, again, please subscribe. College is expensive and so is excessive amounts of alcohol.